Hey guys, Rob here and welcome back to Glidal Tech. Today I will be reviewing my NeoPixel lightsaber from the Pox store. So like I said, today is the review of the NeoPixel lightsaber I got from the Pox store. Now the link to this lightsaber and the electronics will be down in the description below. The reason I say the lightsaber and the electronics is because I personally chose to buy them separately. Um, you can buy them together as one cohesive unit and it'll be about the same price. But when I went ahead and purchased the lightsaber, I did not have the money for the um, electronics. And so, well, I pre-ordered the lightsaber. It was on... Uh, it was set for pre-order release in November, December of 2020 when I bought it and I ended up getting it a few days before Christmas in December of 2020. So um, had that coming in and then a few days before I got the lightsaber I went ahead and pre-ordered the electronics that go inside the um, lightsaber and those showed up a few days after the lightsaber did. Now, um, thing about the lightsaber and the electronics. When you purchase the lightsaber, if you want to do what I did and buy the lightsaber by itself, um, and then the electronics separately, or you just want to get the hilt for display reasons or whatnot, um, you go to the lightsaber and you have two options for a lightsaber without electronics. You can either buy a empty, an empty hilt, or you can buy a hilt in the pre-kit format. Now the empty hilt means that if you want to put electronics in it, you have to take care of all the wiring, all the install, installation, all yourself. The pre-kit format means that you can purchase one of their heart systems, which comes with one of two soundboards, the Asteria soundboard or the Profi soundboard, or Profi board, um, which is the one I chose to get. Um, and you can, all you have to do is once you get it, you plug it, you set it up and plug it in and your lightsaber is ready to go. So that's what I did. Um, the lightsaber is a really nice replica of Obi-Wan Kenobi's from episode 1 and episode 2. Um, as far as I know, it's a 1 to 1 scale replica, which is really nice. It feel, it's completely metal, which is good. Um, it feels really comfortable to hold and to swing around and whatnot. Um, it does interface quite nicely with the standard Covertech clip, belt clip that I have which is great. I can use it for my costume. Um, but yeah, it comes with a blade plug built in that um, I can that can be removed obviously to use to put the blade in there. It has uh, the pommel is removable um, very easily. You just unscrew it, pull it out, and that's where you put the electronics. Um, the rest of the lightsaber can be disassembled, but you need to use um, some Allen wrenches or Allen keys. Um, to disassemble the entire thing, and disassembling it is not necessary for general use, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, the lightsaber for its functions has two buttons up here at the top, the red button, and this um, button with a gem in the center, yellow gem, see if I can get that to focus, there we go. Um, the red button, hold on, there we go. The red button is the power button, and the gem is the aux button. For the electronics themselves. The electronics came with the um, NeoPixel blade as well as this um, heart chassis system. Like I said, I chose to get the uh, the Profi board. Let me scoot forward so you all can see this a bit better. There we go. Um, so this is what the, uh, the chassis looks like. Very simple. Um, these adapters up here plug in directly to the lightsaber on the interior and this is the bottom half where the speaker is housed and this can be used to remove the uh, the chassis from the hilt once you have it installed if you want to if you need to pull out to charge the battery or edit the sound fonts on the SD card or um, change the profile of the uh, soundboard which like I said in this case is the profi board so it uh, there's a whole tutorial on how to do that. I won't get into that here because that take, could take a while. But um, when you get it, you'll have to charge up the battery, which I have done. Um, but you can insert the battery into here after you have the... It comes with a set of pre-installed fonts and um, sound configurations, but I have gone ahead and customized mine. So when I plug, um, put the battery in, you'll hear the boot sound. I am ready to face the trials. That is from an Obi-Wan Kenobi font, sound font based around Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber from The Phantom Menace. So I have the lightsaber here, and if I take off the pommel, and then take the uh, the chassis system. For this specific lightsaber, I have the top of the battery lined up with the Covertech clip here. I line that up, and then I press, 
and then you can hear this click, slight click, um, but that confirms that everything is pushed together. And then I can close up the hilt. And there we have it all in there. And if I press the power button, there you go. You have the sound font. Now the front does light up ever so slightly, but that is not enough to light up an entire, it's not enough to light up an entire hilt, uh, not hilt, a blade that is not NeoPixel. It's just a little added effect for when the saber is on without the, um, the blade in. Um, so now I'm going to put the NeoPixel blade in there. Um, on this side, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. Um, you can see those two holes sitting right there. Those two holes are the set screws. Um, the saber comes with a Allen key that can be used to unscrew the set screws. So I just undo both of them. Um, just a few twists there and then the uh, blade plug comes right out. It's a very simple blade plug. Um, and then the NeoPixel blade gets pushed in. That's about it, you just set that in there. And I like to hold it in um, just to make sure I got a good connection as I tighten the set screws back down. It, the recommendation is to tighten it, uh, tighten the screws until you feel some resistance and then a half turn after that. And that secures the blade in there, which means that when I activate it, I have the entirety of the blade set up here. Which, one of the things I really like about the NeoPixel setup is how the um, light is able to go up the blade and then retract down. You can have the different effects on there. But like I said, um, with this soundboard you can put multiple different fonts on there. So like the power button you pushed um, can activate the blade and um, also deactivate the blade. The aux button, when just simple, uh, simply clicked, changes the font. Now, a lot of these fonts I got from different places. Um, I used a bunch of, I used mostly um, saberfont.com, um, which I will link in the description below. And I also used uh, Kyberphonic, um, which they have uh, a bunch of smooth swing fonts and they're really nice and that's actually a majority of the fonts that I have installed on this saber. Um, this is a Darth Plagueis inspired sound font, which um, is really nice. I'm actually going to turn off some of my lights here so that way I can get a, uh, hopefully the, these effects will show up a bit better. But if I go back to the previous font, which Profiboard, you can do a lot of button configuration, customization, but I have it set to where if you press and hold the aux button while tapping the power button, Wait, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It goes backwards a font. Um, so I can go back to the Obi-Wan Kenobi font, which is really nice. Activate and deactivate. Um, while it's activated, you can obviously have the clash effect. Which is cool. You have the lockup effects, which um, for me, if you press and hold the aux button and then initiate a clash, you'll get the lockup. It's a responsive lockup. Responsive lockup means that as you tilt the saber, the lockup moves around on the saber blade. Um, I have lightning deflect, which if I press and hold the power button while tapping the aux button, you get lightning deflect which is pretty cool. Obviously as it moves around, you get a slightly altering of the lightsaber hum, which is the smooth swing. That's really nice. It also has, if you point the saber down and, and you see, well, that's another one. If you press the aux button, just tap it, you get blaster deflex. Now if you tap and hold the, uh, what is it? The aux button and initiate a clash while pointing down. You get tip drag, where the tip lights up as if you're dragging it along the floor. You also have effects like stab, which I don't think I can get to activate here. It's kind of hard to do, but if you stab the saber forward, you get an effect on the end. And if you stab forward and then uh, initiate a clash, you'll get a melt effect where the front of the saber um, turns from red to orange to uh, re red, to, or what is it? Yellow to orange to red is what it is. And then obviously, deactivation. Next font. You ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? 
This is The Tragedy by Kyberphonic. It's got the same effects. Well, same things you, effects you can do, different sound effects. That's another one I'll get to in a minute. Um, you know, general stuff. Let's see, the next one I have. Anakin Skywalker. This is called The Chosen One. It's by K Sith on um, Saber Font. Um, now, one cool feature about Profi Board is it has the color change ability, which means if I, um, I believe if I hold the aux button and then tap the power button, you'll get that little effect there, and then you can rotate the, um, the hilt, and it'll change the color of the lightsaber. So I can do any color I want to at this point. It just goes around the color wheel, which is nice, and then I end it by tapping the power button again when I'm at the color I want, which I put it back to blue because that's what I like for this. Um, Sound font. Oops. Now, if you double tap the uh, the power button, it'll activate in muted mode, which is basically a glow sword, which is nice if you want to have silent um, fights with the lightsaber, I guess. But uh, other than that, it's kind of just a cool feature. Um, another cool thing about the lightsaber is if you press and hold the power button. Um, while the saber is off, the saber will start playing a music track that you've assigned to the font. Which, um, this one I have the, uh, what is it, Battle of the Heroes from Episode 3 assigned. Or rather, it's Obi ver Obi 1, or Anakin versus Obi 1, um, is the sound track I have on there. I'm not going to play the entire thing because I don't want to get copyrighted um, in this video. Um, but Qui the Qui-Gon Jinn sound font, which is nice. Ahsoka. This is a Commander Tano sound font based on Ahsoka Tano's lightsaber from Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Which is really cool. One of my all-time favorite fonts, this is called Father by um, Kyberphonic. And you can, know where, you can tell where this is going. I really like that I was able to get that slow activation on there um, in the style editor for the, the saber because then I can uh, recreate the uh, hallway scene from Rogue One which is one of my favorite um, favorite Vader scenes and then the last font I have on here currently Obi -Wan Kenobi. is called Obi-4 also by Kyberphonic um, basically Obi-Wan Kenobi from episode 4 A New Hope <laughs> Just the very classic lightsaber sound. Now this font I have, uh, this soundtrack I have on here, it's called Tra I've named it Training Wave, and it's supposed to mimic the uh, sounds of the Millennium Falcon from Episode Four, when Luke Skywalker was training um, with Obi Wan Kenobi. Now this is a sound font that I got from um, what is it? from uh, the A New Hope Graflex uh, sound font, which is not currently installed on the Saber. But the reason I put this one on to this font is so I could show you that you can have the lightsaber active. And the uh, sound effects, or the, the music track will still play. That's not one I think I will get um, copyrighted for using, um, so that's a good thing. Uh, but then the final thing I have on here is a battery level indicator, battery level. which shows me where um, the battery is in relation, well, what the charge of the battery is. Up at the top means it's high charge, um, whereas closer to the hilt means it's low charge. So I'm a little under halfway um, charge for the battery, which means I'll probably need to charge it sometime soon. Meet Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then we loop back around to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Alright, let me turn my lights back on. 
But yeah, so that's my NeoPixel lightsaber. I've had a lot of fun messing with this thing. Um, the ability to change the color, the way the blade looks as it's activated, as the different effects are on there, as it opens and closes, um, and the different sounds you can put on here is really cool. Um, whereas an in-hilt LED saber, such as the Initiate V5 that I had, um, can only customize the... Uh, you can only really easily customize the sound fonts. Um, you can customize the blade LED, but that would be a whole process of um, buying a separate LED and then um, un unscrewing everything, unplugging the first LED, plugging it back in. Whereas this, it's as simple as um, literally pressing a button and then changing the color to whatever I want the color to be, which is pretty cool. One last feature about the uh, Sabre that I want to show you guys is with the, uh, specifically with the, uh, um, the heart system, heart chassis system. Pox Store, the way they install everything is that you can press the activation button on here and it lights it up on the inside of the hilt system there, which isn't that big of a deal. I mean, you won't be able to see it um, when you have the saber, you know, plugged in and whatnot. But so, kind of reminds you of a crystal chamber um, where the kyber crystal, crystal is housed and whatnot. Um, yeah, like I said, as for, for the most part, the saber, it'll be completely hidden when you uh, turn on the saber when the chassis is inside. I mean, you can't even see any of that from there. If you look in from the bottom, you can kind of see it lighting up. But with the pommel on, it's kind of impossible to see. So for the most part, I usually edit that function out of my um, configuration file because I don't want that um, those extra LEDs draining the battery that much faster. But yeah, that's about all I have for today. Um, please check out the lightsaber if you're interested in buying it. Like I said, the link will be in the description. This is the OWP, you know, Obi Wan Phantom Menace, which is pretty cool. Um, I did forget to mention that the blade can hold up to light dueling. I have dueled Zach on a couple occasions with this saber. Um, he, in his saber that he was using, he had a mid-grade um, blade, so it wasn't a heavy-grade blade that was in there. Um, heavy-grade blade would probably do more damage to this than a mid-grade would. Um, and even so, I don't recommend, you know, serious dueling or hard dueling with um, a NeoPixel blade because you do not want to risk breaking the, uh, the blade because these are more expensive than a standard blade to replace. Um, but that being said, it can stand some light dueling if you just want to do some choreographed um, fights or just um, simple whacking each other with lightsabers to get the sound effects and whatnot. But yeah, um, like I said, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see some more Star Wars related videos, you can check it out over here. Up top is my review of the Jedi tunic that I did for my Obi-Wan Kenobi costume. And then down below you can see my build of the clone trooper helmet, which that was really fun to do. Um, as always, please subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you all in the next one.